If you were a fan of G-Shock, or even if you're not, you'll probably have seen the watch dubbed the Casio Oak by now. A slim and relatively small G-Shock with an obvious design cue to the Royal Oak. This design could be the reason it has been so popular, or maybe it's the price. But whatever the reason, the Casio Oak is sold out in most places, including the G-Shock US website. I was fortunate enough to grab one of these from Buckle, but they seem to have had only one in stock and are since all sold out. I see this watch all over Instagram and YouTube, and there are countless reviews out there. I may be a little late to the party with this review, but after getting it in hand, I have to say, I don't understand the hype. Okay, now before you G-Shock lovers grab your pitchforks, know that I am a G-Shock fan and I have been for many years. And even though I shouldn't have to state this, remember this is just one man's opinion. I bought this watch not only for review, but because I was looking to grab a new G-Shock, and the fact that this particular example came with the camel bezel was a bonus. Of course, there are other variations as well. I saw a lot of photos and read a few reviews of this watch beforehand, but I like to keep an open mind as much as possible, especially for something I plan on reviewing. When it arrived, the first thing I noticed is how lightweight this watch is. G-Shock watches are lightweight in general, being made of resin and plastic in most cases, but this felt really lightweight. There are two main reasons for this. One, the overall size, and how thin it is at 11.8 millimeters, which is apparently the thinnest G-Shock currently in production. The other is the carbon core, a thin layer of carbon fiber in the middle of the case that gives it rigidity, but it also allows it for it to be light as a feather. Okay, feather may be an exaggeration, but for those that missed the specs on screen, this comes in at 51 grams. So yes, this watch has a slight resemblance in the style to the AP Royal Oak, at the very basic level of design anyway. If you take a look at the pic of the AP, I guess I could see it as well, but to me it is a bit of a stretch. Looking past the case to the dial, you get a simple analog digital combination with the negative display being very small and for the most part, unreadable. The broadsword hands are large enough for the dial and easy enough to read and have a loom compound inset into them as well. Unfortunately, the 3D markers do not have any loom and if your hands do not have a good enough light charge, uh, the loom on the hands is not very good, the only other light source you have is from the digital display, which does light up enough to see the small digital time, but honestly, I do not find this watch to be great in the dark. The outer case and band are resin and have the usual cheap feeling that a Casio of this price has, and that's just fine. I mean, it's a $100 watch after all. My issue though stems from the buckle. One of my favorite G-Shock buckles is the double prong version Casio uses on a lot of G-Shock. I just like the way it looks, and I like the way the buckle sits flat against the strap. On the Casio Oak, it is just a plain, unbranded buckle, and it is just a weird design in general, and also sticks out from the strap. It feels like an afterthought, which it probably is. My biggest gripes, though, have to do with the dial and the initial setup. Obviously, without an actual crown to control the hour and minute hand, you need to sync the hands with the digital display. This is normal with many G-Shocks like this, but my setup was a little more aggravating because this watch either had a battery change or the hands were just never synced with the digital readout to begin with, so I had to go ahead and resync them. Once set, both the digital and analog readout is very accurate, and I do like the, the day subdial. It adds to the dial dimension, and I like having the month, day, and day, excuse me, month, date, and day on a watch like this. Overall, though, I do find the display hard to read and not just a little digital part. I do not know if it is the dial color, the mineral crystal, or the lack of markers that pop on the dial, but I find the dial to be muddy, for lack of a better term. This watch is just not easy to read at a glance, at least for me. I know this might sound like a lot of griping for a $100 or $110 watch, depending on where you buy it, uh, if you can buy it, but I love G-Shock and I had high hopes for this one. It just fell short. Fortunately, they are in high demand and a friend of mine is buying it after this review, as he loves it. 
Just like anything else, one person can hate something and another will love it. In this particular situation, it seems I am definitely in the minority with my dislikes of this watch, but I need to be real to my feelings and experience with it. I wanted to love it, but I was let down from the second I lifted it out of the box. Maybe it is the overall design, maybe I'm just not a fan of any digi pieces, or the lack of clarity on the dial. Maybe all three, but whatever, it's just not for me. I know many watching this probably own one of these or want one of these, so sound off in the comments and let me know what you think of your Casio Oak or why you want to buy one. For those of you that don't want to light me on fire because I am not infatuated with this G-Shock, hit that like button and also subscribe if this is your first time here. And if you'll want to follow us on social media, it is at Watch Report on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one.